سان کنید دوستانه In the Epistle and Gospel today, there are great teachings on the faith, on the virtue of faith. Um, whatever is born of God overcomes the world. That's clear. God is the creator of the universe. He can do what he likes with any part of the universe at any time. He is almighty God and way, way, infinitely more mighty or powerful than even all men gather together, all mankind gather together. Whatever is born of God overcomes the world, and this is the victory which overcomes the world, our faith. Because faith overcomes the world because it ties us to God. It connects us with God, it connects us, the faith connects us with the power of God. The whole power of God is at the disposal of whoever truly believes in him. And that's why someone who has the Catholic faith, which is the, the faith in the complete truth, which is surpassing our reason. There are things I can prove with my reason, which are in, within reach of my reason, like the theorem, theorem, theorem of Pythagoras, for instance, uh, the squares on the two sides of a right angle triangle are equal to the square on the third side opposite the right angle. It's a theorem and my reason can get hold of it. Somebody lays out the proof, I follow the proof. I can't prove the things of God. I can't prove that he's Father, Son and Holy Ghost. That's beyond my reason. I can't prove that he was once incarnate. This, this see, the mystery is beyond my reason. I can't reason that one divine person once took human nature. It's, it's above my reason. And how it works, how the incarnation worked, for instance, how could he both be enjoying the beatific vision and torture when he was being crucified? Mystery. Um, the incarnation is a mystery. It's beyond my reason. I can't reason it. I believe it, but I can't reason it. Um, the Holy Eucharist, another stupendous mystery, central to the Catholic faith, that the, our Lord is really, truly and substantially present uh, beneath the appearances of bread and wine again. It's beyond my reason. Um, St. Thomas says the, the angels can't, St. Thomas Aquinas, the angels can't understand it or reason it or or grasp it with their natural intellect, which is much more powerful than ours. But their intellect can't get hold of it either. It's God is above and he is infinitely above us. He is infinitely beyond us. And yet by the incarnation in particular, he is specially close to us. So there are things that, are, it, it, certainly the faith, the faith grasps more than the mere, our mere reason or intelligence can grasp. But the faith does grasp it securely. Like I know that two and two is four, I know that God is truly and substantially and really present in the Holy Eucharist. It's different. I know two and two is four are by my reason. I know that God is present in the Holy Eucharist by my faith. But what I do know by my faith is at least as strong as what I know by my reason. And the Church says even stronger because God cannot deceive me. Therefore, what he gives me to believe, when he gives me the gift of faith, I know with greater security, objectively speaking, than what I know by my reason. What I know by my reason can be seen pretty sure, but uh, what I know by faith is more sure still. Who is he that overcometh the world, but he that believes that Jesus is the Son of God? Therefore, the faith, the true faith, which St. John is virtually defining as faith in the divinity of our Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, <clears throat> this faith is stronger than the world, and that's proved by the martyrs. All of the martyrs who triumphed by being crushed, defeated, by losing, as we would say today, by being losers, like our divine Lord on the cross, 
by being losers they won, by being crushed by the world and yet completely happy, demonstrating their happiness, what many of them went actually when they were being crushed, uh, by their uh, rejoicing in dying for Christ, for God, they showed that they were closer to God than they were to the world, and therefore the worst that the world could do them, they could overcome by their union with God. And therefore, um, the, world, the faith overcomes the world, and today in particular, uh, Catholics should not be too upset by the prospects of nuclear war, which is very possible, obviously, much more possible than we might have thought last year, not yet happened, may just still be avoided, but it does look very, very probable, very possible, very probable, because there's a tidal wave of sin, a tsunami of sin, flooding all over the world, especially the breaking of the first commandment, and thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, with all thy strength, with all thy will. Our wicked modern world is pretending that God doesn't even exist, or if he exists, he has, he's not of importance. And that's a direct violation of the first commandment. There are decent people today who count on their decency to face death. But decency alone as we, are, as we may understand it, respectability, being respectable and decent is, does not necessarily mean, not, not necessarily at all mean that during their lives they obey the first commandment. They could lead perfectly decent and respectable lives in the eyes of men when it was not a life respectable or decent in the eyes of God, simply because of the way in which they scorned God or scorned his importance. They had better things or more important things to do on Sunday morning than go to Mass. So, the, the, the people, many people write themselves a check of salvation when their, their faith has been very short of what they, they think is except what, what they have persuaded themselves or what the world has persuaded them is the faith necessary for salvation. They're living without... If they're not practicing the first commandment, they're not obeying the most important commandment of all. And they will find themselves with a great surprise when they, have to, when they come in front of their Maker at their judgment. They will be judged and they will be judged on the Ten Commandments, especially on the first. They need a strong faith, all human beings, to make sure of reaching heaven, need a strong faith in God and a practice of that faith. But if they have that strong faith, then the world is not worrying them much more. It may worry them, but not much, not essentially. Have courage, says our Lord, I have overcome the world. And he who joins himself to God through our Lord Jesus Christ shouldn't worry too much. He may worry, he may especially worry for his children, for whoever, but uh, if he's, it's a strong enough faith to join, to join him strongly enough to God, he overcomes the world. And the world loses its importance. The things of the world, the newspapers of the world, the jobs in the world, the governments in the world, all of these things of the world, uh, without, without God, are of little importance to him anymore. So our faith is what overcomes the world, and our faith is what should, if, if I look after my faith, and it, God alone can give the faith. It's a supernatural virtue which is beyond my reason, above and beyond my reason, above and beyond all my natural faculties. It's only God who can give the faith, and only God who can increase my faith. Um, and sin, sinners will say, Lord, I am a sinner, but I believe in you. 
increase my faith. I do believe in you, but I need to believe in you much more in order to be serene, for instance, in the face of what seems to be coming, the events in today's world. But the world is of relatively little interest to um, Catholic souls, except as far as God is involved. For instance, the conversion of sinners, the conversion of my own family, obviously, the, the need of my own family to stay straight and to persevere in order to be sure of being saved. In connection with the sureness of being saved, Almighty God knew from eternity that the modern world would be difficult, that it would be difficult to, pers difficult to believe, extra difficult to believe because the whole world is practically is disbelieving, difficult to believe and extra difficult to practice that faith simply because it seems ridiculous in the face of what everybody else, what everybody is thinking. Why take God seriously? It's ridiculous to take God seriously. It's laughable to take God seriously. This is what a mass of people think, and it's easy to go with that flow and to lose the faith or to diminish one's faith. Faith is charming, it's nice. Uh, I wish I had, I wish, I, I might even wish I had a stronger faith, but that's not having a stronger faith. It's not a bad first step to wish it or to want more faith, but it's, only, it's still only a gift of God. Therefore, I must pray. I have to pray if I want to strengthen my faith. And I have to ask God for the gift of faith. Lord, I believe, says the sinner in the Gospel, I believe, help thou my unbelief. Let me believe more strongly. Let me believe as strongly as you deserve to be believed in. And then in the Gospel, there is the great teaching of our Lord himself through the incident with St. Thomas. St. Thomas wants scientific evidence. Now, that's, that's not unreasonable, to, except that St. Thomas has had so much evidence in the last three years while he has been a close apostle of our Divine Lord and has been in, seen his miracles, seen hundreds of miracles, hundreds of astounding miracles, has, and well, he can't believe in his, he does believe in our Lord, but he can't believe in his resurrection. It's too much. Thomas has his feet on the ground. He considers he's a reasonable man. I need some evidence. And our Lord gives it to him. Put, Thomas, put your, put your hand in my side. Put your hand in my, the holes made by the nails. And Thomas does that and then believes. What he believes is much more than what he's actually, much more than goes above the evidence. It's a reasonable man who wants evidence for an, uh, an exceptional belief. But that demand, let's say you call it a demand, that demand for the extra evidence is reasonable or unreasonable. In the case of Thomas, after the after seeing the divinity of our Lord so often worked in miracles, Thomas shouldn't have needed more evidence to believe in the resurrection. But he did. It's human. And the Church Fathers will say that he did more for our faith by his disbelieving than the, all the other apostles did by immediately believing. Because our Lord gave to him what he could have given to all the other apostles, but what they didn't ask for. It was enough for them to know through Peter and through, through the, the evidence given by Mary Magdalene of her meeting, direct meeting uh, in, in the Garden of Gethsemane with our Lord, um, or, or next to the tomb of Joseph of Arimathea, her meeting there. Uh, therefore, the, um, the need of more evidence is reasonable or unreasonable. The, the, the evidence can pile up and I can still refuse it. Or the evidence can be quite slight and I accept it. God judges exactly what, what faith, what evidence a man deserves to be given. Our Lord 
could have been offended by Thomas not believing, not accepting even the testimony of all the other apostles. To, to disbelieve the women, well, that's one thing, but to disbelieve all the other apostles, that's another. And uh, Thomas is disbelieving for a whole week the evidence of the apostles, who he's again mixing with, because they're his friends and they've been colleagues and friends, close, close knit with, for three years with our, with and by our divine Lord. And so Thomas is 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 not deserving by his insistence on evidence. Modern man insists on scientific evidence and wants this kind of proof. Modern man is, is, is naughty. He, there's, there's, he has 2,000 years of church history. Now, now he has 2,000 years of church history, b b evidence of the power and truth of Christianity, of Catholicism. Modern man should not be disbelieving, but he is. He's, he's gravely unmeriting, well, the opposite of meriting. He's gravely undeserving by his disbelief. Almighty God is judge. It's why Almighty God doesn't work that we know of many apparitions or miracles in England. There have been, there have been, there still are. God has mercy on England. But England is in a state of, is, is, as, it, as a whole, is in a state of disbelief. And the faith is very weak in England. It, it's now growing weak all over the world. But England has been a ringleader of that disbelief. Ever since at the time of the Reformation, it stamped out the faith. It did its very best. The British government, the English government, did its very best to stamp out the faith. And it was very cruel to the martyrs. And England could boast of a, of, a, of a very deserving crop of a multitude of martyrs. France had similarly martyrs at the time of the French Revolution. France has had exceptional gifts in the faith, of the faith, from God, which is why it's foreseeable that France and Italy, the two most privileged nations perhaps from the point of view of the faith, they will be most cruelly, they will suffer perhaps most cruelly in the suffering to come. It's all in the hands of God. But in any case, uh, faith is a gift of God. I must ask for it. Uh, I must ask him for it. And while it is reasonable to, uh, to uh, be given, uh, to insist on a measure of evidence for my reason, the reason which reaches the point where it recognizes that, that they can go no further, and then it can, can, it can continue, depending on the evidence, it can continue to ask God for the gift of faith, or it can renounce pursuing the faith because my reason is so superior that uh, I judge that these are fairy tales and I judge that I needn't be a Catholic, I judge that um, the, the next life could be also a fairy tale. I judge with my scientific training that the Catholic Church makes absurd claims. All right, you make, you're, you're paying your money, you take you pay your money, you take your choice. This man is choosing to back his scientific evidence. He's, re he's insisting on even more, but it, the truths of faith are beyond. The, the evidence leads up to them, but the faith actually goes way beyond, way beyond that evidence, just with, as with St. Thomas. St. Thomas gets the evidence, but then he falls down on his knees, my Lord and my God, and that's a, a declaration of faith. He's been, St. Thomas now has, been, has had the evidence that he required, that he demanded, that he wanted, God in his generosity has given it to him because he's been a good apostle, a faithful friend and follower of our divine Lord for three years, fit to become uh, the apostle of India and the Far East. Uh, God rewards him with the evidence he has insisted on, but our Lord rebukes him at the same time. Thomas you have believed because you've been given extra evidence, which none of the other apostles needed. 
you, you insisted, I give you that evidence. Blessed are those who have believed the other ten apostles. Judas is out of, the, out, of, out of it by now. Blessed are the ten that have believed without directly in, in putting their hands in my side or in my, in my hand, in my nail, in, my, in the holes of the nails. Therefore, my, therefore what we, we ourselves need is to recognize that um, we need faith, we need more faith, we need a stronger faith, only God can give it. But have I, if I, if I honestly look at my past life, can I say that I have not had enough evidence of the truth of the Catholic faith to accept? Am I, am I, can I complain in my own life of a lack of proof or evidence that God gave me? No, I can't. He's given me plenty enough experience and, and, and knowledge to know that, well, the, 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 the faith is entirely reasonable. The faith is not at all against reason. It goes way beyond reason, but it is not at all against reason. We can imagine a large capital letter F, and at the bottom of the, of the, of the stalk, where the F, which the F stands on, at the bottom of the F is a little R, propped up against the, the stalk of the, of the faith. Re reason does not contradict faith. Therefore, uh, where reason and faith meet, reason and faith entirely agree where the two meet. But the faith goes way beyond literal reason at the foot. But that reason is important. If the reason is falsified, for instance, students going to university and learning all about quote-unquote evolution, their faith can be shaken. Many a Catholic student has gone to the modern universities and lost the faith. They're much more likely to lose the faith at, the university than they are, at today's universities than they are to gain the faith. But therefore, reason falsified can make the whole of the faith, the whole big capital, capital letter crumble, or I may study with my, use my mind at university correctly. I can straighten out my reason. I can use my reason to work out that evolution is a myth and a, and a gravely misleading myth, a myth designed to undermine the faith. I can see with my reason when I study the book, study evolution, that it's with my, according to my reason, it's nonsense. I straighten out the reason and then it becomes much more easy for me to be given the faith, because the faith is not being undermined at where it, at its very at, the, at its very point of standing. Therefore, dear friends, let us ask God for the faith, but not ask God, God for faith which He has given us enough evidence for us to believe. And uh, let us pray, we who have the faith, which is a tremendous gift of God. It's all the difference, it can be all the difference between eternal salvation or eternal damnation. It's the beginning of salvation, says the church. Because it, it throws a completely different life, a light upon the whole world and it overcomes the world. It's no longer subject to the world. Faith lifts us above this sublunar world. Therefore, let us ask God for more faith but not more. We needn't ask for more scientific evidence. He's surely given us enough. Uh, therefore, let us submit to God's demand that we believe. And let us pray. We who have the faith, the gift of the faith, not by our own merit, but by God's generosity, let us pray with the faith for the many, many, many inhabitants of the earth who have not the faith and because they don't have the faith and don't believe or refuse to believe are facing eternal damnation. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Ghost. Amen.